What about the Madres? What about the night? Makes you move. Leave. Hey! What's going on, everybody? It's another team profile and projection here on Talking Baseball. And today we are Hmm. doing your 2023 San Diego Padres. They signed a lot of people. There's a lot of people they tried to sign they didn't get. Handing away money. Jake thinks that maybe Mm. they don't have it. How are you, Jake? James, Trevor, your San Diego Padres. 1% chance. It's like a crazy documentary in a couple years. You Uh, good for this, Mr. Padres? That's what you're saying. 89 and 73 last year. Lost in the NLCS to BBD's Phillies. My goodness. God damn, their record never reflects their... Brain power. West Coast fills. Um, and Dodgers win 112 games every year. Uh, so they added, Trev, they said, hey, we're good. We got to the CS. Let's build upon it. The X-Man, Xander Bogats, 11 years, $280 million to leave the Commonwealth. Michael Waka at the buzzer. How about that? Four-year, 26. Interesting contract mm. there. Seth Lugo. Why don't you yeah. come out of that Mets pen and start and throw some curveballs? Why not? Why not? Matt Carpenter, you were a freak show last year. Here's two years. Nelson Cruz, I forgot about this one. He's he's the GM of the Dominican Republic. I've never had that job title. Adam Angles floating around. Will your guy Honeywell get a look? And then they did something kind of fun. A bunch of veteran invites. Cole Hamill's agent. Our number one guy in program history, Julio Teheran. Uh, how about Jose Lopez, a Rule 5 guy? Why don't you make the team, kid? It's a lot of action on the front. Who they lost? Brandon Drury and Josh Bell. A couple trade deadline ads. Sean, admire my desire. Manaya, he's out after a tough year. Will Myers, out after party. And Clevenger gone. Pierce Johnson gone. Alfaro. Mazzara, the prince who was promised there for a little bit. Awesome, Adams. And Jerickson Profar remains unsigned. So a lot of moving parts. Some in better than the some out IMO. Trev, it starts at the top of this lineup. Boogity, boogity, boogity. You already mentioned the X-Men, Xander. Bogart, still be at shortstop for them. Right field will go to, oh, just a freaking surefire Hall of Famer Juan Soto. Manny Machado, surefire Hall of Famer. He'll be at third base. Jake Cronenworth, not so sure about the Hall of Fame for him yet. Hey, hey. Yet, he's going to be playing some first base? Yeah. Why not? Is that true? Yeah. Okay. Nelson Cruz, they signed him for a million bucks. Come come hit some homers for us, Big Daddy. He'll be DHing. Uh, I'm sure they'll be splitting some time there. Matt Carpenter, possibly in left field. That would be interesting. There's no way that really ends up happening, right? <laughs> this is all off of fan graphs, people, these positions. Uh, Hassan Kim, he'll be in there, probably at second base uh, or shortstop. Sometimes, maybe. Then we also have Trent Grisham and Austin Nola rounding it out. Forgot about our guy Fernando Tatis Jr., who will be back on 420, Jake's favorite (laughs) holiday. On the bench, you got a couple guys you probably know. Jose Azokar, Mm. Luis Camposano, uh, Adam Engel. Big fan of our show, I heard. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, no, I didn't didn't hear that. No, I didn't hear that. But possibly. And then Rookie. Possibly. You didn't mention they brought him in. Why didn't you mention that, Jake? Ned O'Dor. Could possibly be on the bench. So, look, they have a lot of stuff going on in that lineup. Fernando Tatis Jr. is going to be back in April. It's incredible. James, tell us about the rotation. Tell us about the bullpen, because I think there are some question marks there. Do you really think so? Wow. I do. You, Darvish. He's pitching in the World Baseball Classic. (laughs) Got extended. Sure. Got extended. His third six-year deal, Blake Snell, Jake's pick to win the Cy Young above any other pitcher. Michael Waka, he's there. Nick Martinez is there. Seth Luco, Jake mentioned him. Brent Honeywell Jr., hey. Hey. We like him. Uh, Ryan Weathers is there. Cole Hamels, he's going to make the team. And Musgrove is doubtful for opening day, but they're also like, nah, he's good, though. I think the most recent update was his his bullpen sessions are kind of crazy good. So, he's th- that's insane. How are you throwing a fucking bullpen? Your toe's broken. 
Because, like I said, just cut the thing off and get on with it. That's what I... They probably did that. Melvin said, again, it's miraculous. I don't know what's next for him. But it looks like we're on a pretty good path after being impressed by his bullpen session. So, proving you don't need a healthy big toe to look impressive in a bullpen session. Musgrove is doing it all. Interesting. The bullpen, you got Hader. Remember that? Mm. Remember that, Jake? Yeah. You got Robert Suarez. He's a big fun story. Luis Garcia, one of the three Luis Garcias in MLB right now. Have we got a picture with all three of them together? Not yet. Do they know each other and hang out? Yes. Uh, Probably. Wow, I like that we have long reliever on the sheet. Jose Lopez, the long reliever. Drew Pomerantz, haven't heard that in a while. He needs to get off the Padres because he can't really do the uniforms justice. Mm. Tim Hill, he's fun. I could see that. Oh, and uh, Chris Matt. Uh, he was playing in the World Baseball Classic, and no one knew who he was in our warehouse. And I said, he's on the Padres. And it was our social media team. And I was just like, in your face. I know so much more than you. That's nice. Yep. He's got such an intense look to him, too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he looks like a pirate. He looks good in the uni. Kind of bad guy in a movie vibes. From a pi- Chris like Matt. a bad guy in a pirate yeah. movie. Like he, Is, like, that's how you explain this whole team. Bad guy in a movie. <laughs> he's the right-hand man to the captain of the pirate ship that mm. does the dirty work, Chris Matt. Yeah. Like, captain kind of like, they walk the deck together and he kind of scoffs at a guy and Chris Matt knows, okay, I'll stab him, throw him overboard tonight. The captain of the pirate boat, who's not a good guy, but oh. he's like walking with the character and he's he like mentions at the end of their walk and he's like, and most importantly, you'll do this for us. Because we've kidnapped your wife. And Chris Matt's holding the wife like over yes. for it. Yes. Whoa. That's, that's a little, you got a little crazy. Trev, I described this team, uh, and it's a little bit of a lame and thing. She's your wife. <laughs> it's a little bit of a lame cop out equation, but we've been saying it with our Yanks on Talking Yanks a lot that the Yankees' puzzle piece does, hasn't felt complete. This team's puzzle feels complete, but it also feels like there's some duplicate pieces. That it's just like, how are they going to use them during the year? Like, Cronenworth, you you mentioned him. Like, that dude can play anywhere at any time that, like, he's, the, fir- he's the first baseman. Okay. Um, you mentioned Hassan Kim. Like, that dude's a nasty shortstop. He's um, better than Bogarts. You know, that was kind of the early joke when they signed Bogarts was that, you know, they might have other shortstops better than Bogarts. Have you seen Bogarts' number? So, Bogarts made a big change in, like... Um, his creep step or something sure. that he says, uh, like after the all-star break, after 2021, he made this change on his ability to come in on balls or something like that. And if you look at his defensive numbers since that time, they really did. He started becoming positive defensively. If you look closer at his defensive numbers, all his positive plays come from when he was on the right side of second base in the shift, mm. but it counts as the shortstop because second base was there. If you, Look at all his defensive plays when he's on the left side of second base. He's still a negative, hmm. according to the metric shortstop. Kim is really was really good at shortstop. So then they have Tatis, who, what's he going to do? I mean, because Grisham's a two-time gold glover in center field. He's going to go to left field. And Grisham is like, it's weird. They might wake up and be like, well, we got to rethink our positions halfway through the season. They got a lot of players. I, I don't know about the duplicate puzzle piece, puzzle sort of complete analogy yet. I'm still, that is over my head a little bit maybe, Jake, huh. but maybe by the end of the episode, I'll, I'll, I'll get it. Guy. Yeah, Tatis changes everything when he comes back. Like you have to find a place to put him in, okay? And you, you just mentioned all these guys that are defensively driven. That's the decision they're going to have to make. Like do we need bangers in the lineup which is yes they're going to play Xander Bogarts over Jake Cronenworth like they're going to play him over Hassan Kim like he's going to play because they just gave him 300 fucking million dollars dude and then we thought oh well Xander's there uh because they might not have Machado he's gonna opt out well no they already resigned him so like they're gonna have this problem not just this year but for like years to come so is that is it trade central I know the solution Jimmy's got it the Padres don't believe that Nelson Cruz and Matt Carpenter will both work out. And when Tatis right. comes back, one of Cruiser or Carpenter is the DH, and that opens up the outfield spot for Tatis. Platoon him. 
Lefty righty. Easy enough. Figured it out. The le- Speaking of platoon, Jake, and lefty righty, the Padres have great balance. Oh, okay. Yeah, great balance. Nice. They got Bogarts righty, Soto lefty, Machado righty, Cronenworth lefty, Cruz righty, Carpenter lefty, Kim righty, Grisham lefty, Nola righty. That's nice. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of spinning with this lineup right now. It's spinning. When Tatis comes back, you're right. Like you don't move Grisham out of center field. I think that's very important that you have him out there. So now you have to put Tatis in left field, most likely. Soto goes to right. Keep Soto and right. Isn't hasn't even playing right. So keep him there. Maybe maybe switch that. I don't I don't know. I think you value a better arm in right field. So maybe you move Soto to left and maybe um, Cruz becomes assistant GM slash DH. Because he's doing such a good job Bo, with the uh, DR team. Bo, Bo Mel came out and said that Soto's going to play left. And I, I think that makes sense because he's okay. played there previously. And Tatis, if he figures it out and right with the strong arm and everything, and he has a chance to be a plus guy out there. But, yeah, I, and, you know, with managers, they've they've always been something we struggled with a little bit on this show. But we, we love and respect Bob Melvin. Uh, I think he was the voice that clubhouse was kind of missing before they went on their run last year. And, like... Like I was alluding to, like I, I love the pieces of this, and it's gonna take a little wiggling and squirming to figure out. Uh, because yeah, man, I, I don't know. Um, I know watching Yankees Red Sox games in the past, if if there was a difficult ball hit to Bogart, it's like you know sometimes when if you see a tricky ball hit towards a Machado, you're like, God damn it! Like he's about to make a nice play, and that stinks because if that was a chunk of other third baseman. I think they make that play. Bogarts, uh, I had kind of a different feeling. And hey, may- maybe he puts in, he's putting in the work and he's made some of the changes that some of the analytics like it more. Uh, he's age 30 now, uh, which, you know, that's a big pivot point for a lot of ball players, especially shortstops. And like we said, I mean, I mean, what Kim can do defensively, he's a highlight reel. So it's going to be interesting to see if they juggle any of that during the season. Remember they had the weird kind of Bogarts press conference where they asked his position and, and that got kind of funky. So you just hope the team embraces it um, and they go. If this team puts their heart into winning as many baseball games as they can and doing what's best for the team and being flexible because there's going to be injuries and different different things. Like I doubt, I doubt Cronenworth plays 150 at first base. Like uh, that, that guy's specialty is being a good utility weapon for them. Um, if this team embraces winning in the baseball season and Tatis comes back, it's going to be hard to get through Bogart, Soto, Machado, Tatis clean four times a game. Um, and that's without, we haven't even really gotten into their rotation that when they're healthy at the top, um, I mean, Darvish, Snell, Musgrove is, is a one, two, three I like with, with most teams. And then you see what clicks the rest of the way between Waka, who was good last year, Nick Martinez tore on it for Team USA, I believe, or, or he might have had to pull out. No, I think he's in there. I don't know. I think you figure out that along the way. They address their bullpen with Hader and, and some of their moves this offseason. Remember, a couple of those guys were free agents. This is a good all-around team. They can do anything. They can run, they can hit for power, they can hit for contact, and they can pitch, man. It's just kind of the big bad wolf in their division, and are they going to embrace all of it? And, God, Tatis coming back. That's a little bit of a wild card, right? Are are they the big bad wolf in this division now? I mean, they beat the Dodgers. The last time these teams played for anything special, they went out and beat the Dodgers in the playoffs, and it was awesome. And they added, and the Dodgers didn't really add. Like, I think... You could say that the Padres definitely got better. I don't know if you can say that about the Dodgers over the offseason. This team is, I think, depth, right? And that's the word to describe this team. Long, uh, the days of like guys playing one position and sticking there, like that doesn't happen too much anymore. That's going to be the case with this team. Jake Cronenworth did not win the Gold Glove. He's a Gold Glove finalist last year. I'm Thank sorry you. about that. Um, so, yeah, he, he'll he'll be mixing it up everywhere. Guys are going to play different positions. It wouldn't surprise me if we saw like a day where like, Xander played third base. Like, wouldn't surprise me if that happened. Machado needs a day. You move some guys over. I don't know, man. I think there's going to be a lot of mixing and matching. Uh, but you're right. This team can swing it. Uh, the top end of the rotation, I really like. I like the bullpen a lot, too. So there's not there's not an area where you're looking at this team being like, well, they're deficient in this aspect. They're going to give the Dodgers a run for their money in the division. We know famously the Dodgers know how to win 
in the regular season. But looking at the lineup now, it's kind of hard for me to expect anything but a division title for these guys. Whoa. Yes. Whoa. You right? Hate, you hate the Dodgers? Yes. I don't hate the Dodgers, and I bet you when I look at their roster, when we go over on their TP, <laughs> I'm like, I can't expect anything but a division title for these guys. But this is an insane roster. It's insane. It is insane. And the fact that Soto's like kind of overlooked is wild. If he was if Soto was on another team, he'd be like clearly the most talked about and like all the pressure for him to carry that team and like get him going. And I don't know. He's not that here. And he had a rough second half when he got traded over. Yeah. I don't think that's gonna continue. He's pretty good. No. So is he going to be able to do the shuffle with the pitch clock? Spring training games. Padres fans, does he have enough time? A little abbreviated shuffle? He ain't chuff. Think so? I think I remember one of the first spring games. that There was Ryan, some quote from him saying, like, yeah, I'll figure it out. Ryan Cohen, are you going to let me know? Machado. And I said he's going to be the first hitter that openly takes a strike against a pitcher he doesn't care about. Well, he said um, that himself. We said that. No, he said it. He did it first game, and then after it happened, he said, expect a lot of 0-1 counts out of me. We said that, me and Manny. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm wondering for the second half of the lineup what's going to click. Um, you know, Matt Carpenter had one of the most impressive <laughs> batches of baseball we saw last year. Um he had a higher OPS I mean, he's not going to start, dude. He's not going to be in the back end of this lineup. And I mean, and I guess maybe until Tatis gets there, like maybe a couple games. Well, dude, like, that I, guy's just a bench piece for them. And like, you're right. He had a great year last year, but that's not part of their lineup, right? I just, I, I disagree, Trev. I, I, like Jimmy mentioned, they've got options to click here. Carpenter, they gave a contract. To. It's not like... Nelson Cruz, they gave a one-year, $1 million contract. Uh, and we know who he is. He's uh, one of the most respected Latin players of all time. He's the GM of the DR team. We talked about San Diego wanting to bring him in for years because they were looking for voices in their locker room. That's who he is, uh, along with uh, Bo Mel, Bob Melvin, who came in. Matt Carpenter, two-year, $12 million. Like, they brought him in to play. And last year when he played... Uh, he had a 1.138 OPS. It's 128 at bats. It's a small sample size after a couple years of kind of bottoming out, but he, he kind of put in that work. He went to every hitting coach and hitter he possibly could. He retooled it that I guess I'm trying to figure out Trent Grisham came into, came into camp with a new stance, Matt Carpenter, how sustainable is it? Who's going to be the guy in the second slash middle part of that lineup that makes the Padres like a death lineup. Because right now, when when Tatis comes back, there's going to be four there. Cronenworth's a guy. Um, I mean, if he takes a step up, that, that'd that be insane. Um, but I wonder who's who's going to be the, the hot guy or who's going to keep it going that makes it a full lineup instead of half a lineup. Pass that baton. Manny gets it one month, Soto the next. Kim, he carries August when everyone else doesn't care about it. Why not? You know? Multiple heroes. You, we, I mean, Grisham had such a, a bad year offensively last year. We know what we can do with the glove. Like, is do you, if you're Bow Mill and you have Carpenter who's hitting, you know, maybe not at a one dot pace, but say he's got an OPS in the 800s and Tatis comes back, do you put Grisham to the bench and just plug him in center field? Or, I mean, like, I, I, these are the questions and these are the situations he's going to find himself in. I'm, I'm very curious. Like I hope, hopefully Grisham just doesn't hit 184 with a 626 OPS. I think that's what they're banking on. But if he say he does and he's, and he's hitting around 200, uh, what do you do? Spring training is in full tilt. And with seat geek code, John boy, preseason, you can get 15% off any order to anything you want, wherever there's a seat, just make sure you're using seat geek. John Boy preseason. Go get it. Because so. you're right. I mean, that's that's a, that's a, not a small contract that they gave to Carpenter. I mean, I don't think they want, they're expecting him to get 600 plate appearances, but 300, 350, maybe? I think he plays. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, think, I think it sorts itself out in a fine way. 
I just think if you're a Padres fan, you don't want to be <laughs> like every other inning, inning matters. Like, oh, the dudes are coming up this inning. Now we can pay attention. Oh, bottom of the lineup. Let's hope one guy gets a hit so we can get back to the top. This team's so good, dude. <laughs> this team is so good. I think the starting pitching is, if anything, could have like failed them to the point of not having someone internally to step up. Like, if the offense is bad, that's a lot of pieces going sour. It's almost like they all got yeah. a stomach bug. Like, they're not going to go trade for more people on on offense. I think they're going to say, guys, look around the room. One of you, this is it. Step up. <laughs> like, we can't add to this, but. And I don't think the rotation is bad, but if there's any area where like halfway through the season they're like, we need to improve the team somewhere. Maybe that's the area that like eh, we need to get another stud or or top of the line starter. But they got guys there too, so yeah, we're nitpicking a little bit. You're trying to trying to find uh, an area of weakness, but then again, they've never like have they won 90 games recently? What did they win in 2021? They had tanked at the end, right? Yeah, bad. So, we have so we're them talking about them like they're awesome. And the, 79 and 83. And the lineup is awesome. Like it's stacked. But so can we, so what's, what is the over under on? That's such a different uh, team though. If you look, I'm looking at the roster. Sorry, James. 2021 is a completely different team. Hosmer, Victor Caratini, uh, Tommy Pham, Will Myers. Like those guys were replaced by Xander Bogarts, Juan Soto. It's true. No, the like, lineup's amazing. So what's a failure for this team? Like, I don't know what Vegas has the over under as, but it, it, what's a regular season bust? Like what can they do? Like we talked about the White Sox like this last year and they didn't make the playoffs. In your guys' mind, what's their floor? Like if their ceiling is clearly winning the division, we all think that's likely. And And what, if they don't win 90 games again, are we rubbing our eyes and being like, what the hell is, how did that happen? Yes. 93 and a half is what DraftKings has the over under at, which is a big jump up. I bet last year they were probably around 88, if I had to assume or to guess. Um, ceiling wins the division 96 to 100 games. That's ceiling. That's if the starting rotation is healthy and they go off and the offense is what we expect it to be. Floor for them. A lot of things would have to go wrong, man. Like 88 to me is a floor. That seems like a, a reasonable floor. Yeah, I mean, there, there's a little bit of Phillies West out here. I, I think this team made the CS last year. They were doing a little bit like, oh, one more game and we brought it back to San Diego. That would have been us. You think that way if you're, if you're a fan of that team or you're on that team. You have to think that way. Um if the Dodgers run away with the West, I don't think this team is, like, devastated. Like, I don't think they're Mark hammering the table like, they got us again. Like, no, like you said, Trev, they saw them in the playoffs and they beat them. So I, I think this team, uh, especially with the amount of dudes on it, like, I, I think me and Jimmy just did the same thing with their their rotation and the lineup. Like, you overall, you like it. If anything, they get a little thin towards the end. So, what do we like come playoff time? We like the stars. If, if the Padres rotation come the playoffs turns into Darvish, Snell, Musgrove, guess what? <laughs> That's really good. And that can go with any other team. And the top of that lineup will go with any team. So, I, I'm not too worried about regular season. And I think, like, I don't know, the Dodgers just win games in the regular yeah. season. Uh, you'd like to see the Padres put up a 95 win year. And really stamp that, like, you know, we are one of the best teams in baseball. Instead of us coming down the stretch, like, you know, will these Padres turn it on? They're they're an 88-win team. Like, I don't want to do that. I want them to be one of the best teams. And almost that must-watch late-night team. That's what they were. I would love if they were that again. They just need to sell a bunch of tickets and win a bunch of games so that um, the owners of teams uh, yeah. that are from – the East Coast that were orange can shut the shut up about um, acting like they're, acting like they're failures. Oh, well, the Padres are spending all this money, but what's it got them? Well, a lot of fans and money. So fans, I'm rooting uh, for the Padres. Obviously, everyone should be rooting for the Padres, besides Dodgers fans, I guess, if you really hate them. But to do well, because all it's going to do is let your owner know, oh, a viable option is going out and and using my money to improve the team, being good. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. 
Um, 2006 is the last time they won the NL West. Jeez. It seems like a long time ago. 16 years. How many times have the Dodgers not won it in 16 years? Like a couple times, maybe. Not a lot. Giants won it a couple years ago when they won 107 over 106. (laughs) And that's probably it. What other team would have won it in that time period? Dodgers? I mean, I think... The Rockies, did they ever have a... I know they they went to the World Series that one year. They've never won it. That was 2007, right? Maybe they won it that year? Dodgers Hmm. finished third and fourth in 11 and 10. This is the Padres. Screw them. You over or under, dog? D-backs won it in 11. Hell yeah. Yeah, the snakes. Oh, shoot. You guys go first because I'm having trouble with this one because I didn't think it was going to be 93 and a half. As much as I love this team, that's the biggest number we've seen so far. I guess that makes sense as we're going up. Yeah, the line take the over. They're going to be so good. Worry I'm going to take the over. Worry about, about Tatis coming back in the middle. Just because when he got suspended, it didn't feel like a clubhouse full of support. Yeah, but, you know, he had a little humble pie. I think he, I think everything's going to be just fine. I think this is a team that's going to run off like and have like a 19 and 6 month. Like they're going to have some really, really big months. You think if they can if avoid think, the collapse? If you think Tatis had humble pie? I got some humble, <laughs> I got some humble pie for you. All he all he does now is think that he's a victim. Is that true? I, mean, I haven't heard his quotes, but I'm would bet money on it. His dad sure did. He knows he fucked up. And all those guys are telling him he fucked up. And Nelson Cruz is going to give him a master class in how to freaking handle that because everyone loves Nelson Cruz and has forgotten that he got popped. But he's going to point right in Nelson Cruz's face and say, you're old. No, he's going to say, don't tell me shit. You did it too. Old man. Yeah, We're going off the rails here a little bit. I'm My going. I'm taking the over. I'm go- I think I am going to take them right now and declare them that I think they're going to win the division. Wow. Okay. I disagree, but until the Dodgers TVP, then I can change my mind. Okay. Okay. That's fair. You'll always deserve the right to change your mind. I'm going to throw a sneaky under out there. I think 93 and a half is a little bit of a big boy number for a team that hasn't thrown that out there yet. And again, I, I think there's a chance the Dodgers roll in this team. I think they land 91, 92 and that's a nice year for them, but it happens to be the under. So to sum it up, Trev thinks they're going to win the division. Jake thinks they're going to be trash. I'm right in the middle, slight over, 94 wins. I'm rooting for them to be really good. Nice. Yeah. I'm going to go 96 wins in a division title. Yeah. Dodgers don't care anymore about the regular season. Yeah, Dodgers are switching it up. They're like, let's do yeah, the, they, let's do the Philly stuff. They care so hard. I mean, they're going to be in first place until the Dodgers trade for Otani and then and then and then it's done. Then they do. Then they Otani. They uh, they Sabathia him every three games. Otani's pitching. Otani's. I can't, well, I can't go any lower. Otani's already a cardinal. Yeah, <laughs> that's a joke. Ooh, Jay Groom. Hey, what's Watch that young kid's name again? Salas. Salas. He's sixteen years old. Jimmy hates him. What no, about- I love him. I just think that like <laughs> that's God given. What about E Guy Rosario? He's not. He left. Injured currently. He left. Quit. Oh, wow, wow. Oh, wow. Camposano. Go nuts. Victor Caratini. Not on the team anymore. Not there. No, not there.